What is up YouTube? That's here and today I'm bringing you guys a brand new series where I show you three of the most creative move sets featuring a more obscure Pokemon and today we're going to be featuring Scrafty. Scrafty can be used so many different ways and I just wanted to make a new series where I show you guys a little bit more of my team building process, how I come up with these creative move sets. So if this is something you like, think about it, let me know in the comments below and uh, yeah, let's just get right into this and talk about what Scrafty does that's unique, why I'm going to be featuring it today and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So Scrafty is an Intimidate user. It's a fake out Intimidate user. It was really, really big back in Gen 5 VGC before the addition of Fairy type because Scrafty has a four times weakness to Fairy, but that doesn't mean that Scrafty is completely useless. So Scrafty can be compared to things like Hitmontop. It can be compared to things like Hariyama. It can be compared to things uh, even like Incineroar or like Iron Hands, right? These are all very similar mons of that bulky fighting fake outy, intimidating mon. You can even also compare it to things like Conkledur, right? But all of these mons have different strengths and weaknesses, and it's up to you as the trainer to pick the right one for your team. So Scrafty, uh, again, is that dark fighting type. It has a, a, sorry, a resistance, sorry, not resistance, a nullification to a psychic type, which is actually really good. Like Hitmontop doesn't have that, Hariyama has that, Incineroar has that, but like these two also take big damage from psychic types, which are actually really strong in the meta right now. Ferretraf is huge. You don't want that psychic type weighing you down. So it gets Intimidate, Hitmontop also gets Intimidate, Hariyama doesn't get Intimidate, Incineroar does get Intimidate. Uh, this doesn't get Intimidate, this doesn't get Intimidate, but Scrafty brings a lot of nuance to the table because it's it's one of the few of them that gets fake out intimidate and a stab drain punch i think this is super important that he gets all three of these moves because none of the other ones get this combination like hitmon top gets the uh fake out right and it gets the intimidate but it doesn't get drain punch right it doesn't get drain punch it gets uh you have to basically use close combat right? And Hariyama, yeah, it gets the fake out, right? But it doesn't, and it gets the drain punch, right? But it doesn't get the intimidate. And Incineroar gets like the fake out and the drain punch, yeah, because Incineroar is like super busted, right? With the intimidate, but it doesn't, it doesn't stab the drain punch because it's a fire dark type, so you don't really see that, see play that often. You know, hands gets things like fake out and drain punch, and it's objectively a very amazing Pokemon, but it doesn't get intimidate. Same thing goes for Conkledur, right? So I think Scrafty does bring a lot to the table in terms of all three of these moves. So like I said, I'm gonna be doing three different movesets featuring this Pokemon in completely different ways. So when you, do, you, you guys can do anything if you put your minds to it. We're going to be building three completely different teams for this Pokemon as well. And uh, hopefully you guys like this little series of this Pokemon you want me to feature. Let me know in the comments below. So that being said, uh, let's talk about how to play Scrafty standard first. I think getting a good understanding of how you kind of play Scrafty standard and then putting our own little spin on it near the end is probably the best place to start. So Scrafty again gets Fake Out, Drain Punch, Intimidate. We're probably going to be building an Assault Vest set for this one because this is how this Pokemon's commonly seen play over the years. Uh, Scrafty gets a lot of coverage moves. Like it gets like all the like elemental punches, not all of them. Actually, yeah, it gets all of them. Um, it gets a bunch of other really, really good things like a uh, knockoff as well. So it gets that big stab knockoff. This Pokemon was Incineroar before Incineroar existed. It just never got parting shot. That being said, it still gets things like uh, close combat. We're not going to be using coaching on an assault best set, but let's just sort this by physical. You can also do this on showdown as well. So you can sort things by physical and show you all the physical options. So, you know, I used to use crunch back before knockoff was an option. I guess dragon coverage. Um, you can use things like foul play. It's head smash, ice punch. You can see there's a lot of really, really solid options if you want to use them with Scrafty. I think what I'm going to use here is going to be dragon tail. Um, if I can you know, type correctly. I really like Dragon Tail as an option here. It's great in a Registeel, Coma O, and any sort of setup mon. Those are very, very popular right now. I'm going to be able to phase those out. But also, it's going to be able to stop Trick Rooms. So I can go, like, fake out into something, and if they're not fairy typing, I can Dragon Tail them to uh, basically remove them before they set Trick Rooms. So against, like, a Frigirath, this Scrafty is, like, really, really good. Um, it's almost kind of like having imprisoned Trick Room. You can just click that, because, like, what's Fire Draft going to do? Like, Hyper Voice your Assault Vest Scrafty? It's not going to be that great. So we need to think, what is the perfect partner for Scrafty? You know, we're taking a look at its typing here. Um, we have that big weakness to fairy. So we're going to really want to add a Pokemon that helps us cover up for that weakness to fairy, but also help cover up for some of our other weaknesses. You know, weaknesses to fighting as well. Um, we have weaknesses to flying. Uh, there's a lot of weaknesses that Scrafty does have that we do still need to cover up for and think about the mons that are using those type of attacks when adding um, this teammate Pokemon. So I think the fact that we have Intimidate Right? We're going to be able to intimidate fighting types, intimidate flying types, things like that. I think that means Amoongus is a very, very good partner. 
it's grass poison typing. Yes, it still shares a weakness to flying here, but it's gonna be able to pivot in on fairy, on fighting moves, and if we do happen to pivot in on like a flying or a fighting move, we're gonna be able to, that's already intimidated from Scrafty. So Amoongus is a really, really solid option here, in my opinion. Um, that being said, uh, I think Amoongus is just a great Pokemon in general, and I think the rest of the team that we're going to be trying to use this Scrafty in is going to be more of like a like an aggro balance team. Um, we're going to probably want to add like a good Sweeper, a good Mom with Speed Control, and then like a couple good mons to close out the game with Scrafty kind of being the mon that we pivot into alleviate pressure. That's going to be its role in this team. So that being said, I think Fluttermane is going to be a very, very good mon here, right? You know, we had weaknesses to fighting here. Now we have two mons that we've added that alleviate pressure from that Scrafty uh, in those specific matchups. So I think it's going to be very good. You know, uh, Fluttermane's weak against things like, uh, well, all forms of physical attacks really, but most like those steel attacks. Scrafty's going to be able to pivot in, uh, intimidate those mons, and uh, generally just increase our matchup. I think Scrafty's also very good into like, you know, Shempow, Dragonite, Entei type things, which normally can give Fluttermane a little bit of problems if Fluttermane is outsped or you're lacking the speed control. So Scrafty and Mungus are going to be really good at dealing with those cores. That being said, I do think that, you know, uh, we want to start adding a little bit of speed control for ourselves. So I think I'm going to add a Tornadus. Uh, and then from there, I think I'm also going to be adding an Urshifu Water. Um, I think Urshifu Water is the right one here. I think a lot of people have been using Urshi Dark with Sash recently. Um, but since we already have a Scrafty with that big four times weakness, I don't want to add a second one of those. Um, and I will say that now we're starting to stack like double electric weaknesses. So I think the last Mon here, we don't want to make our Flutter have to do all of the heavy lifting um, in a like late game scenario. So I think I'm going to add a second sweeper mon that can help us close out games once we have like speed control. So that's going to be Lando Eye, right? So this team is very, very standard. We have a little bit of a rain core. You can see here they have, though they have to respect like fake out big damage. They have to respect uh, redirection, big damage. They have to respect like getting outsped and then my flutter main deals big damage. And it's not just flutter. The same thing applies to the Lando because Lando's going to be outspeeding most of their mons as well. So I think in these situations, like having multiple things that your opponents have to respect or not. One Mon doesn't have to do all of the heavy lifting. Uh, similar jobs can be done by Scrafty, Amoongus, you know, what have you. I think you're in a really, really good spot here. I will say one last thing about Scrafty that I really do like is that it's great into like a lot of those other fake out um, Drain Punch Intimidate Mons because we have such good defensive typing and thinking about like things that are good against like some of these core, like Chi Yu would be kind of good into like some of these Chi used terrible against Scrafty, like holy moly, like Chi just gets destroyed by this guy. So I think this is going to be a pretty solid standard, like rain aggro balance team to use Scrafty. And what I like to do here is once I get my six mons, I'm going to start adding moves that I know I want them to have. So I'm going to probably be adding like protect here, definitely add the rage powder. And we talked about, that's one of the reasons why we actually added the Moongus into the team. Um, talking about adding Spore, this is going to be very, very good at just uh, putting things to sleep and letting us pivot around correctly. Definitely something your opponent's going to have to respect if they don't hit the right skill level, you're just going to win with just the Moongus, basically. And then the last two moves, you can actually put two different things here, maybe even three. I think Pollen Puff is the standard one. So you can side Pollen Puff your AB Scrafty, side Pollen Puff your Urshi, Flutter, Main, Lando. Very, very good. It's the perfect thing to use after you get Spore to then regain tempo in a game. But that being said, we're seeing a lot of people transition over Clear Smog. We saw Rally Factory use Clear Smog Moongus in uh, Charlotte, uh, region sorry, uh, Knoxville Regionals last week. I think it's very, very good. It's good into Dozo. It's good against other setup teams. Uh, I also think that Sludge Bomb is very, very good. Um, there's a few other players that are using Sludge Bomb as well. This is good into Rillaboom. This is good into those water ponds, fire ponds, things like that. Um, I do think that Sludge Bomb is a viable option. Yes, it clashes a little bit with the Spore, but the fact that your Amoongus like, stabs it and has an 85 base special attack, like you chunk things with the Sludge Bomb. That being said, we're going to go standard for this first one and just use Pollen Puff. I think it's going to be the right option here. Uh, as for this Flutter, we're probably going to be building the spec. So I'm going to go Moonblast. I'm going to go Dazzling Gleam. Uh, from there, I'm going to go Shadow Ball. And I'm probably going to go, I'm going to go with Power Gem. But I will explain why you wouldn't use something like Icy Wind here on a Specs Flutter. Now, Icy Wind works when you're using like a Sash Urshi or the Urshi or your, your other Mons um, aren't incredibly fast because you can hit something like an Ogre Pond or something like a Tornadus or something else. And then drop their speed below what your Urshifu's speed tier would be, and then Urshifu just claps them. But since we're going to be probably using a Scarf Urshi, we don't necessarily need um, that additional ever speed control because Urshifu would hit and then we would Icy Wind. There's no reason for the Icy Wind to then lower their speed even further because we'd rather just KO them with a Dazzling Doom. So this is a good example of a situation where Icy Wind wouldn't really be viable. So that being said, I like the Power Gem though. It's good against Fire Ponds. It's good against Entei's Dragonites. A lot of things that... uh you know, are kind of hard to remove off the board. It's great into Hisuian Arcanine as well. 
Um, for Tornadus, I think we're gonna build Tornadus pretty standard. So you got like Protect here, you got your Tailwinds for your dynamic speed controls. Um, after that, I think, hmm, the next moves we're gonna probably want, I'm gonna add the Rain Dance, I think. I think I'm gonna add the Rain Dance and the Bleak Wind, right? Very, very standard Torn. I think the Rain Dance is gonna be good. It's gonna be able to enable the Urshi. It's gonna be able to enable the Lando uh, to be able to go for those Sand Seer Storms. Um, it's also gonna make it so our Amoongus has like less of a weakness to fire attack. So like things like Torn Amoongus are really, really good in like Fire Pond teams because they're not gonna be able to pop your Amoongus. You can go for the Rain Dance. You can go for a safe Spore into your opponent's uh, Ogre Pond's teammate. And then from there, you're just going to be able to slam like 100% accuracy bleak wins for the rest of the game with your Sash Tornado. So it's going to be really, really solid. Um, that being said, Urshfu here, we're going to build this guy's Scarf. I think a lot of people like Aqua Jet on this guy, and I don't really like the Aqua Jet on Scarf Urshi as much. Uh, I think that it's still viable to have sometimes, which is not something I personally like. I like Rock Slide more here. Um, I think Rock Slide is going to be a really, really good... Uh, option for being able to like close out games you can hit things like water pond and in sins you get that flinch factor you're good against flyers i think rock slide is a solid option if you click at one out of every 10 games it can be the right play it's also really good into like hard tr teams where you need just a little bit more damage um and then the rest of the moves are pretty standard uh, we're gonna have things like u-turn which we're gonna be using more often than any other move on this guy probably uh you usually just want to u-turn if you don't think you can ever pick up a KO. And even if you can pick up a KO, sometimes it's still best to U-turn to reapply those fake outs, reapply those Amoongus pivots and things like that and just position better. And then once you get to a situation where you know you won't be getting KO'd on you or your teammate's side, then you walk into something like a close combat or a surging strikes with your Urshifu. So really, really standard stuff here. Uh, I like this a lot. And uh, let's go to the Lando. Lando, I think a lot of people like to build with Substitute right now. And I'm not going to be using Substitute Lando. I'm going to be building it with uh, Protect. Sludge Bomb here is to break their Water Ponds and other Ogre Pond forms. Um, and then last but not least, we're going to have like Earth Power um, and Sand Seer Storm. Remember, we have the Rain Dance active. Uh, Lando's not going to get that secondary chance to burn because we're probably going to make it a Sheer Force Life Orb set. But... Um, it can't miss in rain, and that's still going to be true. So here we go. Um, we now have all the moves for all of our Pokemon, and this is where I would like to put our items on. I briefly talked about some of our items. We're going to put a Life Orb here. We're going to put a Choice Scarf here. We're going to put a Focus Sash here. I'm a big fan of Focus Sash Torn right now. If I can type it. <laughs> uh, we're going to put a Choice Specs here on this Flutter main. And if you guys are liking these sort of, you know, little guides where I talk a little bit about my thought process when building these teams, let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll try and make more. Also, leave a comment, let me know a Pokemon you think would make uh, a good feature for this series where, you know, we're going to be using three different Scrafty sets. So you, this one's standard, but the other ones are probably going to be pretty spicy and I'm going to think them up as I go. It's completely on the fly. So that being said, um, Amoongus, I'm going to use Citrus Amoongus over something like a Rocky Helmet. I think the Rocky Helmet is very standard, but since this Amoongus is the team's main defensive pivot, uh, I'm going to alleviate as much pressure from it as possible. Um, having it be able to not just get double tapped in a lot of situations where they see the Amoongus, they double into that slot and I need to be able to go for a Rage Powder or like a Spore or something like that. I think it's really, really good to give a moose just a little bit more sustain so it can actually fulfill its role uh, to its fullest capabilities. Um, that being said, this is where I would go and I would make sure my abilities are right. We have the Intimidate here. Uh, we want Regenerator most likely. We have to use Protosynthesis. We don't have to use Prankster. Um, but we are going to be using Prankster. Uh, Urshifu has to use Unseen Fist. And the Lando, like I said, is going to be using the Sheer Force ability. This Pokemon's attacks with secondary effects have a 1.3 power boost, but it nullifies their effects. So the effect of Sludge Bomb being able to poison, this being able to uh, lower Spad Def, and this being able to burn, these are going to be nullified, but we're getting a second Life Orb boost. Also, the secondary effect of the Life Orb is to take that Recoil. So that's why you see like Lando's um, don't take Recoil when they use these secondary effect moves, because it's the secondary effect that takes your health. That's why Life Orb is such a good mon on these Sheer Force mons. So that being said, here we are. We have all of our mons, we have all of our moves, all of our items. I'm going to go talk a little bit about our Terras here. And since we're on Lando, this is a great place to start. I think a lot of people like to go Poison Terra Lando. Um, this gives you a better matchment of things like Fluttermane, but honestly, this is just so you have more damage on your Sludge Bomb. It's a good defensive typing. Uh, you kind of just need this thing to break the water ponds in your opposing uh, team over there. And then realistically, like you have Intimidate, so you should be able to just always pivot in that Scrafty, Sludge Bomb their Water Pond. Once Water Pond's gone, our Urshifu just rolls through the game. That's the idea. So, so Poison's very standard there. Urshifu's going to double dip a Water Terra, just go for it a little bit extra damage. Torn, we're going to make this guy Ghost, even though I don't think we need it. I'm personally a fan of Steel or Dark in this situation. Uh, Fluttermane's going to double dip its uh, Fairy Terra. 
And then as for the Amoongus, um, Amoongus is generally built Water Terra. I really, really like this because if you see a Tornadus Urshifu weed, you can just lead Amoongus, go Water Terra, spore their Urshifu, not really have to care about bleak one damage. Yes, you're opening yourself up to taunt, but if you surround yourself with like some other mons like Scrafty or something else to get threat in the Torn, you can get trade situations that are kind of nice. So I like the Water Terra here. It's also very, very good in the like Trick Room teams. Uh, if they ever get up their Trick Room and have like a Torkoal come out to threaten you with a big eruption, you just Water Terra reverse the game. It's also good in like Incineroars. I think water is very, very standard. And actually, I'm going to go with Water Terra here as well. I really like the double Water Terra here. I think this makes Scrafty extremely obnoxious. It's something they're not really going to see coming. It makes us even better into Incineroar. Um, this makes us very good into things like Water Pond the first turn. They want to go for that big damage with an Ivy Cudgel. Um, it's good into Fire Pond for the most part. And uh, honestly, I think it's definitely worth testing. It's great into Urshi Torn, I think. So I'm going to try this. Again, it also comes with the same types of things. If our opponent gets up Trick Room, I can bring the Scrafty, Water Terra. Water Terra is a very, very good defensive type. And yes, we have like Water Terra, Water Terra, you know, Water Terra. But we have that electric pivot if there is something we need to pivot to. So yeah, this team's a little bit electric weak, but, and, and grass weak, but we have like resistance here to grass, resistance here to grass, you know, resistance here to grass, like, uh, especially Terra. Um, well, if we have to Terra, but you know what I mean? Like we have a lot of solid options and mons that punish grass types like Tornadus, like our Amoongus and other things like that. So I think this is going to be pretty standard. And uh, yeah, this is where we're going to start working on our Eevees. Let's start looking at the Lando. I think Lando has to be able to outspeed an Urshifu, right? So the fastest an Urshifu could be is 252, 252, Jolly, right? So it's a 163. So Lando like has to get to 164 if it wants to actually be able to do its job of breaking Urshifus. So you still actually have to be timid to do that. You can't do it by just going modest. So you still have to be timid. It gets to 168, right? Um, we could drop a little bit of this out there and go to 165. This is where you get the bump. Basically, when you would include your nature plus all your Eevee's investments, sometimes you get a bump, which means you get an extra point. That's where this is. But that being said, I think if you're going to go this close with Lando, you should just max it out and make sure that you're outspeeding things like Chi Yu and other popular base 100 mons. There's Chi Yu, there's Glorian Zapdos, there's regular Zapdos, there's Salamence, there's Volcarona. You want to outspeed all of those mons. So Landorus being 282 is a solid play. I think what I'm going to do here is actually make this a more aggressive Lando. You could just do something like this but i feel like you can make it just a little bit better and go like a 244 and then a 44 here splitting up that last eight from one point in special attack into a one of each of these defenses because remember the first four matter and after that it's every multiple of eight so it's going to be just a little bit more effective at like uh making a little bit of a bulkier pokemon i might need to put some more in defense to make sure i can always live ivy cudgels but if i have to poison terra versus like a water pond or something but I think this is fine. I'm definitely going to test this for now. Um, Urshifu is going to be built with a very similar EV spread. You don't need to be Jolly, though. You can get away with Adamant. This is still going to be able to outspeed anything you need to outspeed with Scarf. So we can go back to Adamant here. And then again, four, four, four. But we're taking these last four out of right there. So again, these hyper-aggressive teams like this, very, very simple EV spreads, uh, you know, not that much to say. You could put a little bit more in speed. You could put a little bit more in some bulks. But I think that these Pokemon whose main jobs are to trade and deal damage, you want to excel at that first. And then if you know you can make yourself a little bit bulkier, that's where you would, uh, you know, work on that after some team testing. Uh, Tornadus here. I'm going to go with not the button. Sometimes the button's right. Sometimes it's wrong. So they see three support moves. They they assume I want to support Mon. No, Tornadus, because it's sashed, I would like to just make it a sweeper. Uh, this is how I personally build Torn. You're a Sash, right? Soak that damage, deal that damage. Tornadus uses like two or three attacks and just goes down. Like, I think this is absolutely fine Torn spread. You need that full speed to outspeed Ogre Ponds. Those are 110s, right? So you need to be able to outspeed those, threaten them with the bleak winds. It's very, very important to how Tornadus plays. Um, Fluttermane is going to be a little bit different. Now, I will say, even as recently as like San Antonio, um, as Portland, I used a Fluttermane set that was this but i'm gonna add a little bit of bulk onto our flutter main i'm gonna make it back into a modest nature um and i'm gonna go to right here this lets us outspeed um things that outspeed torns by like one point so we're still gonna be faster than most genies and things that are speed creep to speed creep genies um and then from there uh i like running uh, i think it's like 44 4, 4 here so it's a little bit bulkier it's slightly bulkier and the reason why i want to use this bulkier flutter here um, even though it's not that bulky, is because we have the Scrafty with the Intimidate here. So the Scrafty with the Intimidate, paired with this slight amount of bulk, maybe we can even get in a second Intimidate somehow. It's going to be just a little bit better. But we know that we're going to be outsped by a lot of stuff, and that's just kind of how the that's kind of how the way the news goes with this team. 
So Amoongus. Amoongus actually doesn't need to go 2v2 in HP. It's going to get diminishing returns on his defense and spit F stats because it has a very, very high base HP. I think you can actually drop this down to like 236 in a lot of situations. Usually you don't want to go past 219 if you want to avoid those diminishing returns, which is basically when your uh, respective defensive stats are doubled. Uh, by your HP stat, you're just wasting points in HP at that point. Um, and then I like to build my Amoongus as like heavy in defense. So that's going to look something like this. And that's how I would like to build this Amoongus. I'm also going to go speed reduced, uh, zero speed nature. So I can actually just function as well as I can in Trick Room. It's also a really good idea in a lot of situations to have your Amoongus be zero speed. So you can lead with the Amoongus, right? And if you need to pivot in your Intimidator, if you're pivoting out your Amoongus, if you're speed reduced zero speed nature, that means you're pivoting last, which means if they lead Torn Urshi and they're going to pivot in an Incineroar, they have to pivot out an Urshbu, which is a base it's 97 mon, they're usually Scarfed, and a Tornadus, which is a base 111 speed mon, which means they swap in their Incineroar at first, they intimidate your Amoongus, and then you switch in your Scrafty and then re intimidate their Incineroar. So you actually really want to be, you want one low speed Pokemon on your team every single time you use Intimidate. At least my opinion, it's a good rule of thumb to go by. But yeah, I think it's a very, very good idea. Um, and then after that, like, you're good to go. Scrafty's EVs are going to be harder than the other mons. Because Scrafty's in the middle round, or middle ground, right? So we compared it to, like, Hitmontop, 70 base speed. And Cinnaroar, 60 base speed. But it's faster than things like Conkledur, Hariyama, Iron Hands. It's the middle ground. It can fake out other, you know, bulky Drain Punch fake out users. But it still gets outsped by a lot of stuff. And I'm going to put some speed in Scrafty. I actually want my Scrafty to get to about 90 base speed. This is going to be the same base speed, um, roughly, as our Flutter main, if we have a Tailwind up, right? So um, if we have a Tailwind up, it's about, it's one speed faster than Genies, which I don't know if this is necessarily required, but it also makes our Scrafty able to weed versus Incineroar, and we can then see who intimidates who, and you know, if we're faster, if we go first with our Intimidate, we can fake out their Incineroar um, and just basically do whatever we want with our teammates. We can, like, fake, we can weed, like, Scrafty Amoongus and go fake out their Incineroar, spore their teammate, next turn, pivot out the Scrafty, um, do whatever we want with the Amoongus, spore the Incineroar, or if it's not Goggles, and come back in second Intimidate, like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, from there, I do think you want to max out your HP on Scrafty. It's, it's one of its lowest stats, so you definitely want to max that out. I don't actually think you need, like, any attack investment, and I would be actually putting a bunch of my bulk into defense here. I'm going to put, like, a 4-4. Four, four. Remember, splitting up those 4s, get those out of the way first, and then a 156 plus Nature defense. Make this guy just super chonky on the defensive side. Yes, we have like a lot of mons that are chonky on the defensive side, but I, I think that's because most of the mons in the meta are physical mons. Remember, we want this to be a good mon at like Shen Pao. We want this to be a good mon into like, you know, Dragonite, Entei, Dozo, stuff like that. So I think this is a very, very standard way to play Scrafty. And uh, what I'm going to do now is go and play a game with it. So I'm going to basically talk my way through the team preview and uh, hopefully we'll get a win with this team. So again, this speed tier though is to outspeed genies once we have a tailwind up from our torn. And that's the whole idea behind it. All right, here we are. We're fighting Raging Bolt Balance with uh, Porygon 2. So we talked about this. So, like this Scrafty has a good matchup into all of those mons but Flutter. And one really good thing about Scrafty is it's going to force those Flutters to come. So we can then weave in our Amoongus, weave in our Poison Terra Lando. Our Flutter is good into their Flutter, in my opinion. I think our Flutter is a good mon of them. I'm actually going to lead uh, Scrafty Flutter, and I'm going to see what we can get away with here. Uh, they should be still having this Water Pond here. They're probably going to have the Porygon. We can definitely uh, Dragon Tail that out. I'm going to bring our Amoongus, because I think Amoongus is good here. Uh, it's decent there. It's great into Bolt, in my opinion, once they're Goggles, and even if they are, I don't really care, because we're going to bring Landorus to close it out. Landorus is also very, very good into things like, uh, into things like Rillaboom, right? Because you have that big Sludge Bomb. So we're just going to start this one up, get right into it, and uh, let's see how this one goes. They're big thinking. They, they're probably like, Scrafty, what? What? That's so weird. And I will say, you could definitely use an Incineroar where the Scrafty is on the team, but I think Scrafty brings a lot to the table. Brings a lot to the table. So there's the Porygon, there's the Water Pond. So we can just get this Porygon off the board. Um, they download it into Attack Boost as well. Um, so we can fake out the Porygon on the first turn, but they could go Ghost Terra, right? I'd much rather not let them get up this Trick Room. What I'm going to do is just go for a Dragon Tail into the Porygon. And there's two things I could do here. I could pivot in my Amoongus, and then next turn, like, Threaten Spore. I think I'm actually just going to try and pop this uh, Water Pond, though. And let's go into it. So this stops Trick Room. If you want to go, like, all in on their Porygon, like, go nuts. Like, I don't really care, but you're not getting up Trick Room, and I think you want it. I think you want Trick Room here, especially because, like, Flutter is dictating so much, like, board state prevalence. So let's see what they want to do. Rillaboom. Hey, that's fine. You just give me a free terrain. Like, we take these. Fairy Terra. Big damage. 
One shots their flutter. Now remember, not flutter, um, their um, water pond. Now they don't know that we have Urshifu in the back. They have absolutely no idea that we have Urshi, but we made a play that looked like we did. We prioritized something that was important looking for for us, right? So now they they like, yo, so they have these two plus Rillaboom, right? But they're like, yo, I'm ready for that Urshi. There's no Urshi. I have an Amoongus coming in in a couple turns. I think what I do here is I can let them Trick Room here and probably just go into Amoongus and then I'll spore that if they're not Goggles, right? And we don't know if they're Goggles. We're playing on close team. We can always knock off too. I think actually we'll knock off this first turn and just pivot in my Amoongus. But you see how good of a situation, a board state we're in right now? Yes, they could have also Water Terra, but if they Water Terra, then they can never use like another defensive Terra, which means we're probably going to be in just a really, really good spot. So Scrafty coming out with something. Now, also, that Dragon Tail that happened, that would have never... But that's not something that like in Sinnoh those other mons can do. Yes, they can roar and do other stuff like that, but that's a crit... Crit freeze, literally never lucky Scrafty. Maybe maybe the next set we should use should be a shed skin Scrafty. Because it's unfortunate that we just got um it's unfortunate that we just got frozen right there, but we did get the knockoff. Um that being said, I think we're actually in like a great spot to just like chill because like I don't think this board breaks Amoongus very well. Um yeah, let's just chill. So we're gonna drain punch there. I'm gonna go for the sport into the Porygon. If you would like to switch out to Rillaboom, be my guest. That's a lot of damage. You can double into the slot, but now you have a stat drop. And that's our Citrus value. They have an attack boost, not a special attack boost. We do thaw big damage into that Porygon. Critical hit it right back, going up to full. Hey, we're in a great spot. What are you going to do here? What's your what's your game plan here? Um, I bet they have Terra Blast. But at this point, I think I can just come in with Lando. Yeah, our, we're faster than them there. We crit for 62 that should mean we still KO here with Scrafty. I don't know if I want to bring this guy out yet. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Because I know that... Uh, I'll just bring out Flutter. We don't need to show land. If we can win without showing land, that's actually really good. So I'm just going to go for a... Uh, I think I kind of want to knock off this. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to knock off. Because we're going to kill the Porygon with a D-Gleam here. And it's going to redirect into the Rillaboom. There. Yeah. So once we get that advantage, Scrafty just bullies with knockoff. Makes so they can't really defensively pivot in. So if we pivot in on the Rillaboom, right, and we knock off its AV after we do the Dazzling Loom, the second Dazzling Loom will get the KO. They have one turn to try to go for, like, a Grassy Glide or, like, a Fake Out turn, but they should be pivoting out the Raging Bolt here. Yep, there's a Rillaboom pivot, and this first Dazzling Loom should KO the Porygon, but we still targeted that slot because Porygon would not normally carry the Protect. Yeah, unfortunate, um, but we do knock out its AV, just like I said, and you can bring this Bolt back in, but we haven't even shown our last Mon. We haven't even shown it yet. So in this situation, you have a Fake Out pin, I honestly think I could probably just attack with both things in the real boom and get a guaranteed KO, but I'm going to save the flutter in the back. Um, I don't think they have Calm Mind. I really don't. They're orbed. Um, so I'm going to just go for a Drain Punch in the real boom. If you want to read me and go for like a Fake Out here and like a Calm Mind or a Thunderclap into our flutter main, I can't really do anything about that, but at the same time, we have a huge advantage here. There's the Fake Out in the flutter slot. That's the correct play in my opinion. You crit my Scrafty again, right? The Scrafty's eating like crit crazy moves right and it's just tanking it it's just absolutely massive and then remember they thought we had urshifu because of how we let because of how we carried ourselves in the team preview throughout the first turn few turns of the game when we pivoted in that landorus landorus sorry they were just like nope i'm done easy peasy lemon squeezy scrafty kind of busted right like kind of kind of busted i mean we got frozen right but then like scrafty did everything like incineroar could never what scrafty did in this game it dragon tailed out to stop a tr it bullied the ogre pawn it got a free set of terrain up so it had even more sustain like this game went exactly how i think a lot of your scrafty games are going to go if you want to go with the standard av scrafty move set so that being said i think this uh i think this scrafty set works and uh i'm gonna go into the next set that i'm gonna talk about because again we got frozen here right so that makes me think how could we utilize a shed skin set in vgc so let's uh let's build a team for it let's build a team all right so we got this scrafty team my showdown is a little bit laggy you see i have like third i have like three thousand teams <laughs> but uh yeah let's build a scrafty set right with uh, a different ability so again we just showed the value of intimidate scrafty and if you're playing on ladder or like close team sheet your opponents aren't gonna know which scrafty you have they're all gonna assume it's intimidate but that you can actually still bluff intimidate and get the value out of these Shedskin and Moxie sets. So let's do a Shedskin set, and maybe we'll do a Moxie set after. How about that? That sounds fun. So Shedskin, it has a 33% chance to have its status as cured at the end of every single turn. 
which is really cool. There's some cool stuff you can get away with here. I think if you were to use things like rest, you can go for full heals, right? I'm, li I'm liking this. And you have a 30% chance to heal yourself at the end of every single turn. You don't need to sleep talk per se. It's just really nice. You can just heal yourself and then like next turn just wake up easy peasy. I'm gonna go with a Dragon Dance set here on this Scrafty. Um, rest Dragon Dance, very, very standard into like a knockoff Drain Punch, right? So I'm, I'm big vibing with this one. Um, now, this one doesn't have the greatest matchup into like Fairy Terra Flutter, but it's gonna be the rest of our teammates jobs to deal with Flutter. Remember the Mon that we used next to Scrafty in the last one was Amoongus to be able to defensively pivot in for Flutter weaknesses. We're going more aggressive this time. I'm gonna go with Scizor, right? Scizor is a Mon you don't really see the play with that much anymore, but I do think Scizor is a very, very good Mon in this meta. I think I'm also gonna be going a little bit more into a different variant of Hyper Offense. I'm gonna be doing this with like a Shen Pao. Shen Pao, Dragonite, um, Entei, Entei is another very, very good Mon, being able to cover up for that Fairy Weakness, because we have like Fairy Weakness here, here, but then we have Fairy, sorry, Fairy Weakness here, 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 Fairy Resistance here, and here. I'm also going to make Scizor into this team's de facto, like, Tailwind Setter, and then I think a lot of people would use, like, a King Gambit or an Amoongus here. Let's try and do something a little bit more fun. We can have, like, AV Orb. I, I think Urshi is the right Mon here. It is. I think Urshi is the right mod. I don't really want to use Urshi, though. I don't necessarily want to use Urshi. Let's think of, like, something fun that we could pair. I'm going to put... We just fought one. I'm going to put a Porygon 2 here. This way, if we're going up into a matchup where our opponent has, like, crazy speed control, right? Like, Torn Urshi, all that stuff. We can leave, like, Scrafty Porygon 2 and just go into, like, a semi-room with, like, Scrafty Porygon Scizor like Entei to close it out. So it just gives a very, very different look on the team. I think being able to respect Porygon and Shen Pao pulls your opponent in a few different ways. Porygon is just a really, really good defensive Mon in general as well. So that being said, here are our six Mons. Um, let's start adding some moves. Uh, we know we're going to want Protect on Scizor. It's my opinion. I like Protect. I like Tailwind on Scizor as well. So Tailwind, Protect, very, very nice. I'm going to actually add U-Turn. I think U-Turn is a very underrated Scizor move and Bullet Punch. You could also think about adding things like Faint, Close combat is also good. This is just how I want to play Scizor on this team, have a little bit of pivot power. Um, Shen Pao is going to be used with Protect, usually a Sucker Punch. Um, I know Jamie Boyd used like Electric Terra Shen Pao at uh, Liverpool Regionals. I'm not going to be dipping down too deep for that one. We're just going to go Sacred Sword, and uh, I'm going to go Ice Spinner here. So just so we can continue to use priority moves with our teammates. Dragonite, um, I think I'm going to build this Vested, right? So that's going to be built with like extreme speed. That's going to be built with... I'm going to use Outrage here. I like the Outrage. You know, a lot of people are cutting Outrage on this for um, just a couple other options. Sometimes people still go like Flying Terra, Terra Blast. I don't think we need all that. Uh, we're going to go Stomping Cantrum. It's good into Fire Pawn and Incineroar. And I'm going to go aerial ace for this because again it's good to those ogre ponds and stuff like that ogre ponds give this team a little bit more problems than i want because they can crit through the intimidates and other things like that so i'm going to try this um entei i'm probably gonna go orb i know it's a really weird looking set i could also go band on the entei i'm down to go band on entei then yeah extreme speed again right uh because i'm gonna go vest on the dragonite yeah so uh, i don't mind this so uh, extreme speed sacred fire um you know let's see do we want i'm gonna go with the uh Sorry, the Stomping Tantrum again. Look at my brain. I'm having to think this stuff up on my own right here. Um, stomping Tantrum. we got to type this thing correctly. I'm thinking of the last move. So again, this is what I do. I'll sort it by physical, see what moves these guys get, see if there's anything I really like. I don't think we need Iron Head. I don't really want the Flare Blitz. Stone Edge is sometimes good. There has to be something else that I want to lock into. Because you got to lock into... Dude, I'm going to go Giga Impact. Giga Chad Impact with a normal Terra Choice Band. I'm vibing with that. All right, and Porygon 2. Uh, this thing can be both Trace Downward or Analytic. I think all of these abilities are good. I think they are all actually incredibly viable. Um, let's see. Download is the standard play, but I don't think I'm going to be playing as much positional for download procs. So that means Trace is really good. You can Trace Intimidate on there and Sin. Trace, like, there's a bunch of really cool... You can Trace Prankster. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Trace. Um, I just like that as an ability. Um, and then from there, I'm actually gonna put this Porygon. So I just wanna see if it gets this move still. All right, it doesn't get Ally Switch anymore. But I'm gonna go Protect on my Porygon. I think Protect, um, Trick Room. And then I'm going to go... You could go, like, Bolt Beam, Thunder Waves. There's so many different things you can do. I'm gonna go Recover. And I'm gonna go Terra Blast. And you may be thinking, like, that's it. You just have a normal move. Well, Porygon's going to be able to have a Terra that's literally something else. So if we need to hit 
for one other type we can. Um, I'm probably going to make it poison so we can hit Fluttermain with something, right? Steel's viable, but I, I'm just going to go with this. Porygon is here mostly to uh, enable Scrafty and Scizor to sweep in the situations where they're desired, right? Um, and I really like Protect Porygon. I'm a big fan. I think more people should use it. So that being said, now we have all of our move sets here, and I'm going to start adding uh, the right abilities. So we already know that we want Shed Skin, right? We want, we want uh, Technician here. We want Sword of Ruin. We're going to go with the Inner Focus over the Multiscale here. We're going to go Inner Focus on the Entei as well, and then Porygon, like we said, has Trace. So now we can start adding items. We have the Eevee Light here. We, we already talked... Uh, roughly about using choice band and we want the assault vest here on the dragonite and then shimpao is built with sash scissor um you could build it aggressive you could build it defensive i'm gonna put safety goggles scissor yeah um and the reason i like safety goggles is because this team is very weak to amoongus uh if they get in a good amoongus position and uh yeah it doesn't really work for scrafty because we can heal ourselves but like these other guys are big like amoongus kind of just bullies them versus scissor can like pivot in on the amoongus and still do all of its things, and you can't lead, like, a Moongus Flutter. I can just bullet punch you through that. So I like goggles on Scizor here. Uh, and then for the Scrafty, the, I, this item is weird, right? I don't really know what I want to have here. I think Citrus is a good option. I think Rocky Helmet is sometimes a good option. Um, you don't really need Lumberry. Um, I think Leftovers is really solid, but, like, we're not necessarily stacking bulk. We're stacking, like, we're going to be sweeping here. So what's a good... I'm going to put Clear Amulet, right? So... We just can't have our, we can't be intimidated. So after we get like dragon asses, we're just going to be going to town and sweeping it up. I like this a lot. So let's start adding these Eevees. Since we're on Scrafty, let's start here. Remember the last Scrafty we used got to 90 base speed because this doubles to a 180 in Tailwind. We do not have Tailwind here. So we need to get to at least a 112 base speed, which you can see Scrafty does not get to by being uh, neutral or adamant. We still have to go Jolly here. 121 is preferred. This would let us outspeed something like a Tornadus with a plus one Dragon Dance. So like we go Dragon Dance, they don't kill us because hopefully they don't, right? That's how, our, that's how our game's gonna go. And then like knock off plus like a plus one, like so much damage. That's our, idea, that's our idea, right? It's also good into like Landos. It lets us outspeed everything base 100s. It goes all the way up to base 111. So you're gonna outspeed Ogre Ponds as well and be able to just go for fat Drain Punchers. I really like that a lot. Um, as for the rest of our moves here, uh, we are still going to want usually two Dragon Dances, so I think the rest of our EVs are probably going to be relatively defensive. Uh, I'm going to put most of my points probably in bulk, but let's... We need to get our HP out of the way first, too. So maybe something even just as simple as, like, 244, 44. You know, we've seen the same moveset, but it's a different way than we did in the last team, right? The last way we were going, like, attack speed with a 444, and now we're going HP speed 444. And we're letting our Dragon Dance and our Inherent Speed do a lot of the uh, heavy lifting here. Scizor is a little bit weird. Um, Scizor, very similar to Scrafty in the last one. I think you want to make sure your Tailwind Calcs are right. But I actually want to underspeed um, some things with this Scizor. I want enough speed. I actually will go into underspeeding Torn, I think. No, actually, I would like to outspeed uh, Whimsicott if I have Tailwind up. So that's going to look like this. So let's just plug in a Whimsicott here. Whimsicott has a really weird um, base speed. I think it's 115. So that's going to look something like, it's one, sorry, 116, 184. So we want our Scizor. And the reason we want to outspeed Whimsicott, in my opinion, is because if we get up a Tailwind and they bring in Whimsicott in like the mid game or something like that, or let me, let me say we, like, we fake out Whimsicott turn one Tailwind, then our Bullet Punch has a, we're both using priority moves, and then we're a faster base speed, we already broke their Sash, Scizor cleans it up. It's a little things like that that you don't necessarily always think about, but it's definitely important. So Scizor's going to need a decent amount of speed investment. Uh, in Tailwind to outspeed there. So it's going to be 64. So 64, which is a good base speed. Um, you know, if we take the plus two out, we can see it's 93, which still would outspeed those genies as well. So yeah, um, 60, 60. Yeah, 60. That's totally good enough for me. Um, and then from there, I like my sister's was very aggressive. So 252, with like a four, uh, four and a 188. I've used a scissor set before. It's a good one. Deals a lot of damage. Soaks enough damage. And we're going to go. Shimpai, you can click the button. Uh, puts that uh, last four in one of its lower stats in spit up, so it's completely fine. Um, gotta be full speed in Shimpao, in my opinion, though, for at least for this team. Dragonite's a little bit weird. Um, I think Dragonite would like to get to 107, because this is what you would need to outspeed Dragapult at plus one. People also sometimes like to get their Dragonites up to 112, but you also see people going like full speed Dragonites, right? I think that I'm gonna get my Dragonite to 122. This should be outspeeding most genies if we have like a. Uh, we don't necessarily have like an Icy Wind user. Maybe we just. 
put icy wind here. I really like that. And this gives us like functionality to a lot more have like our plus one calcs, like actually do something plus one minus one calcs. We're talking right here about like, let's say I'm leading up against like a tornadoes and uh, I can icy win it with my Porygon to avoid taunt. And then next turn my dragon, I would be able to outspeed it. I like that a lot. Um, and we're speed creeping that by just a little bit. You only need uh, the 120 to be able to outspeed that guy, but we're speed creeping things that speed creep that by just a little bit. From there, we're gonna go 252 plus adamant, big damage, and then a four, 476, very, very standard. Um, Entei, I'm actually gonna click the button here. I like the full speed Entei's. I even like them to be jolly. That's just my personal opinion on this mon. We have a lot of damage from our choice band, we're fine. Porygon, because we're not raising Trick Room, um, we could get it to be fast. But like, honestly, you would want your Porygon to be like, you need it to be 112, which is actually full speed to outspeed those base 100s after an Icy Wind. I don't necessarily think that's how I want to run this Mon. But that'd be really funny. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think I'm actually fine. I'm going to put 12 points just to make sure I outspeed other Porygons. Uh, from there, you definitely want to max out your HP stat on these EV Light Mons. Um, and then we got to think, are we eating more physical or special attacks? We're going to actually be eating more special attacks. It's our pivot for all those big physical attackers. Like, we're going to trade with physical attackers, but like a Flutter Main is going to give us problems. So we're going to go like 236 plus, and then like a 4-4, four, four, right? Or sorry, 4 um, four there, right? And minus there. So it's just very, very standard defensive Porygon. So now that all of our moves, all of our items, last thing we can do is our Terras, right? So I think Scrafty... With this one, I don't really know what Terra I want. Ghost Terra is actually seeming kind of nice. But at the same time, I'd like something that helped me out a little bit more versus... Uh, let's see. Help me out a little bit more versus Flutter. Because I feel like Flutter can pin me more than I'm comfortable with. So that means something like Steel, Poison. I think I'm going to go Fire here. Now we don't need to block Wisp. We don't need to go Poison, because that just gives us like... No, Poison's the right one. Because um, Poison also mitigates our fighting weakness. So yeah, we'll go Poison on the Scrafty. Um, Scizor can be, it doesn't need grass because we have, um, safety auto's going to go water here, just better against instant sin. Uh, Shempao, we're going to go ghost, just standard ghost, and then we're going to go normal, normal, um, normals for our extreme speed spams. And then Porygon, Porygon will go ghost. That way we can still hit flutter for super effect. We don't need poison at that point. I think ghost is a very good one there. Cool. So we have coverage for basically everything that we want here. So we won the last one that we did with the first team and we're going to go into a, another little game here. And this is a reminder, if you guys like this little series, let me know and I'll make more videos like this. Feel free to request a Pokemon that you think can be used in three completely different ways. Um, going to this game, um, we see Shen Pao. So Shen Pao Mir, we talked about what we want to do. We want to trade versus that. We really need to mitigate the effectiveness of that Flutter. If we can get the Flutter off the board, I actually think Scrafty just wins the match correctly. Um, this Porygon, though, is going to be dedicating a ton of our opponent's resources. So we need to think, are they someone that's playing passive? Are they going to go like Amoongus Gouging? Or are they going to weed more like Urshifu Ogre Pond? Right? We need to think, which one are they going to be? And I think that... I like Scizor into this team. Scizor does a really good job of baiting out those gouging fires. And so I think Scizor is also really good at pinning the floater. I think I can actually lead Scrafty Scizor because I pin here. And they don't know that I have Rage Powder, right? They'd have to lead Flutter and that. And then I could just U-turn to that. So I, I like this. Um, I'm going to go with... Do I want Shen Pao here? I think it's going to be Rocky Helmet Amoongus. So I don't think I need it. I actually think I can just go with like... Entei is definitely coming. And you know what? I will go with a Shen Pao. I'm not, I'm not a big Shen Pao guy. Like, I, I use it, but like, I don't, I don't have big on it. So Gouging Fire and Flutter. So we actually can pin there like super hard. Um, we're not intimidated. They can go Protect, Breaking Swipe, but I think that Flutter is most likely going to be Spec. So I'm actually going to go just Hard Water Terra, just so we don't die to like a Heat Crash. And they probably think like, whoa, I didn't get intimidated. That's weird. And so they probably kind of might know what we have, but we, I'm hoping they assume it's Moxie or that they didn't notice. So Flutter Main's going to go there. I'm just going to pop a Dragon Dance. Go into your Amoongus, it's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine, because our, our, our Scrafty's about to be going places, right? Our Scrafty's about to be going places, right? So that's one Dragon Dance. That's nice. We could Tailwind here and knock off. We could also... We're not faster than them yet. They're going to go for a Breaking Swipe. Um, I think I don't need a Tailwind yet if I get the second Dragon Dance off. So I'm just going to U-turn the Amoongus and Dragon Dance again. And then I will be the captain now. I will bully the Flutter. I, th I think I Oko Flutter unless they Terra Fairy. Which would be really cool. <laughs> they might even just pivot out the Amoongus. Heat Crash. Yeah, we're fine. 
We eat those. Who are you going to spore? Are they, sp they are sporing. All right, so they're citrus. Very, very standard. Ah, oh, they're sporing. Okay. Shrimp house okay here. Damn, they are, they are actually sporing that slot. I should have just stayed in with scissor, I think. Eh, scissor's still fine. Spore there. Yep, I can't stop that. So it's now drain punch time. So I will just, uh, I'm just going to let this Shen Pao do its thing. Um, I can even pivot back in here. Actually, I will do that. No, actually, I think I can Oko you. I think I Oko you. 242. They're probably faster than me. I have to pivot the scissor back in and go for the drain punch. Because I don't want to, I don't know if it's an Oko. Rage Potter, cool. I mean, I do outspeed, so I don't die. Get a little bit more health. Heat crash, not enough damage. Cool. I actually don't dislike this. You're going to go... I'm going to rest here. I like the rest. And I'm just going to stay in with my scissor. Um, I'm just going to bullet punch right here. No reason not to. I'm just going to pop a rest. Yeah, because I think they... I'm wondering what else they have. I wonder if they have the water pond or if they have Urshi. They're doing a really good job this game, I think. I think they're doing a really, really good job. Our Shempao's asleep. If we didn't, if we left that Shempao in, we would have been in a bad spot. Double protects are nice. We take a free rest out of it, though. Free rest. Free rest. And this Scrafty, man, he is just, he is just moving and grooving, bobbing and weaving. Um, they're probably going to start weaving in breaking swipes at this point. And that's okay. I'm going to wake up. So I didn't wake up that turn, a little bit unlucky, um, but maybe we'll wake up this turn at the end of the next turn. Sorry. You turn on this slot. Yo, we're gamers. Look at this. He crashed. No, no, no. We're actually super chunky. Big damage. And now we can just come in with our Entei and we can seal that slot up. Nice. Shedskin wakes us up. Yo, we are gaming out here. Do you see this? Do you see this? All right. So um, we don't want to lock in E-Speed. Well, we do though. Because <laughs> like they have the flutter, but like I feel like at this point we're getting big like i'm talking big big i think i'm gonna dragon dance again um actually they haven't tarried yet i wonder if they're gonna pivot this is fine spiky shield i don't care you know we just need to we need to lock that up just need to lock in you know drain punch big damage breaking swipes fine yeah no big deal and so this turn i'm gonna lock that slot up pivot in the scissor it's better to knock off. Yeah, it is. So you pivot in the scissor and knock off there. It sucks like I'm not getting the health, but like uh, if they pivot in the flutter or something, like, you know what I mean? Like it's just so much better. Yeah, flutter, you see what I mean? Like it's so much better. Yep, burning bulwark, I don't care. Still have my pins. Flutter down, Scrafty is set. Scrafty is set in this game. We're on turn seven of a Shed Tail Rest Dragon Dance Scrafty game. Like what even is this? Weave in the Protect. You're probably gonna go uh, Spiky Shield Burning Bulwark here. Um, I can just throw drain punches into this for the rest of the game. Cause like we have, oh, they had a double. Is that a double? That is a double burning bulwark. Unlucky. Unlucky. We get burned, but you know what? We're just going to heal it with our shed skin. That's what I'm talking about here. Oh my goodness. Wow. 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 Okay. Um, I'm feeling myself too much in this situation. I'm going to pivot in the Entei and just go for a drain punch here. You can pivot out your Ogre Pond. Actually, no. I, I, I was fine with what I had before. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. You didn't, you didn't actually take my attack stack because it clears the Quamo. That's so sick. Um, I can probably just get away with, like, bullet punching this guy. So I will. No, I think the end tape. No, it's fine. I mean, I'm trying not to throw here, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I was, I was afraid of it. The, now, now their speed stat's gone. Like, their speed boost is gone. Big damage here still, too. Yeah, it's, that's great. We hit those heals. Um, in this case scenario, I think you can just drop a... I don't think there's anything wrong with like a U-turn into this and a knockoff. And if you were to protect, i just do it next turn. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Burning Volwark? I don't even heard of that, bro. Now, they have no item either, but Scizor takes the KO. And we just reap. Oh my gosh. Oh! Professional Pokemon player, that's plus one. Literally, literally, making the magic happen. The magic. This set cooked like it cooked look at this replay like you're not gonna get content like this anywhere else like this isn't scripted right i didn't 
make these sets beforehand. I just am playing the games, building, and you guys can do this too. If you follow these same steps, like it's, it's literally making the right choice in team building over and over and over again, following these same steps. You guys can do the exact same thing. This was the turn right here. You pivot in to be able to respect the flutter pivot, even if they pivoted in that other slot. We saw the scissor get it, and the knockoff got it. Like, oh my gosh, the outplays were real. The team building was real. We flexed on a really, really good team, and I'm feeling scrafty. So that's another scrafty team. I'll be leaving all of these Poke Pace in the description of this video if you guys want to use them in your own games as well. But uh, let's go into uh, the last team, right? Let's go into the last team, and uh, let's see what we can get done. So scrafty, we've used... Um, we've used Intimidate, and we've used Shedskin, and now we're going to use Moxie. I think Moxie is probably an easier one to use, but I think it's actually a lot of value that still comes with it. Uh, I will tell you, I'm probably going to be using a Scarf one here. So if we're going to be using Scarf Scrafty, what would be a good set of teammates for it? You can definitely go back into Torn Urshi, but we've already used that today. Let's see. Let's get some moves out of the way first. We're going to go knockoff, and I think like the Scarf knockoff is actually really, really clever. Um, I think Rock Slide is a good option because you can get those big flinches. Rock Tomb is also a good option sometimes, because we're going to have enough speed to be able to bully some things. Scarf Coaching with Moxie could also be viable. Uh, let's go sort this by physical. Huh. You know what? Instead of Rock Slide, I'm going to go with Head Smash. And let's sort it by physical. Um, close Combat's going to be better than Drain Punch here. And you could still go things like Fake Out, or even, like, a couple other things are still viable here, too. Hmm. Outrage is really funny. Ice Punch, we'd be outspeeding Landos. Yeah, dude, I'm down. What are they going to do about it, right? That's the thing. What are they going to do about it? This is just too much damage. You basically only need Knock Off and Close Combat um, to make a Moxie set like this work. Moxie, for those guys who don't know, gives you a plus one attack boost if it KOs another Pokemon. So if we get, like, one KO with a Close Combat, we are just off to the races. I think it's best to play this guy on a team with protection from fake outs. So this is going to be things like for a giraffe. I think Scrafty for a giraffe, right, is going to be very, very nice. You want to usually pair that for a giraffe with a couple other Pokemon that enable it to do its best. That's going to be things like Blood Moon, right, Blood Moon. And I'm going to add an Amoongus here as well. You know, Scrafty still has those same weaknesses. This looks like a Trick Room team. Is this a Trick Room team? Yeah, probably not. Um, I'm going to make our last two Mons. Let's see. I, I want a Tailwind Mon so I can flex this into like a faster Tailwind mode. So let's just see what gets Tailwind. And let's see what would be the perfect partners for Scrafty. Because I could also just go like Dragonite Shimpao again and that's fine. Um, I think that's that's probably one of the better options. But let's see, what are some other good Tailwind setters that we could use here that are more unique? Um, we could even go like Entity Drift Bloom, Scrafty, things like that. I think Fez is a good enough Tailwind setter. Um... Jugulus. That's a lot of fairy weakness, though. Yeah, I don't want that much fairy weakness. How about, like, Volk? No, we already have one... Mm, Volk's not bad. Yeah, let's go Volk. Yeah, that one, that one cooks. Look at that. Like, oh, man, that's not, that's obnoxious. Um, and then we're gonna go Urshifu here, and we're gonna go Urshi Water again. I'm sorry for using the same Mon twice, um, but it's gonna be a different set. So I like this. This looks like Trick Room with, like, a Scarf Urshi to say, like, hey... You better not weed something that stops me from setting Trick Room so I can Trick Room. And honestly, it's not Trick Room. So we're going to be using a Scarf Scrafty here, right? Um, so we're using a Choice Scarf Scrafty, giving it a plus one speed. Uh, we're building its EVs in just a moment here. But I think this is a really, really good set. And like I said, I'm going to be building this as more of like an anti-TR. So it's going to be like Imprison, uh, Trick Room here. And then we're going to actually be bullying them with like all three of these mods. That's the idea here. Uh, so Imprison TR, uh, we're going to go Hyper Voice. And I'm actually going to use Psychic Noise over just Psychic, uh, because it's only a little bit weaker, but it gets the boost from the Throat Spray, and it stops healing, which is actually really nice. So they can't, like, Drain Punch us back with, like, an Iron Hands, if we can just stick the uh, Psychic Noise into that. Blood Moon is going to be built, uh, Protect, Blood Moon, and then um, Earth Power, and uh, Hyper Voice. Hyper Voice. And then Amoongus. I, you know what? I'm going to be, gonna be that guy. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to just take the same Amunga set that I used because it, it functions exactly the same way. Um, we're just going to be trying to block damage uh, to Scrafty, trying to block damage from like Incineroars into the rest of the team. And I think it's just going to speed up the process. Again, 
having that slow mon is very, very important. Um, having that redirection pump up, pump up is going to be great here. Now, as for Volk and Urshi, I'm going to put a choice band here. We are waking up and choosing violence. Uh, I'm going to one-shot quite a few things. I'm going to make this a Steel Terra, I think, too. So you can just lead it into, like, Grass Pond and just close combat Oko them. And then they're like, oh, crap, I, my matchup and a Blood Moon's over. And then Blood Moon's the game. Um, for Valk, though, I'm going to Sash it. And I think it's, uh, it's a very underrated Sash one. So we've got Protect, Tailwind, um, probably just Bug Buzz, and Heat Wave. People think that you need to make things complicated. You don't. You're not fake out in this. It's a it's a Valk. It's his flame body. You're not fake out in this. And, and Sin can fake out, but Rill is not fake out in this. Rill doesn't want any piece of this Mon. Um, it's going to Urshis. You can still have redirects that you can get two hits into. Like I think it's a really, really underrated Mon. And it pairs very well here. Um, you could also think about cutting this Bug Buzz just for redirection. They don't know that we don't have it. Right? That's the way this team works. Uh, so that being said, this Urshfu is going to have uh, Surging Strikes. Um, it's going to have Close Combat. Um, and then like I feel like I'm going to put... Do I want Ice Spinner? It's hard to say. I don't necessarily need Ice Spinner. Um, I'll put Aqua Jet for sure. Right, This is a good Aqua Jet one because we don't have the terrain. Um, I like Rock Slide here, but U-Turn is right. I'm going to go U-Turn. And then from there, now that we have all of these, we can start making our Eevees. Oh, sorry, fix the rest of our items. We're going to go Life Orb here, uh, and we're going to go Throat Spray here. So this looks like a Trick Room team with a couple aggressive options and some additional redirection, but in reality, it is going to set Tailwind uh, and just sweep, sweep, sweep one Mon for a little bit of a defensive pivot if we need it. Right, That's the idea here. So that being said, uh, let's get some uh, EVs out of the way. Scrafty, again, we need to get to that 120-ish uh, base speed so we can start outspeeding Genies. So that's going to look something like 121 here. And then I'm going to go 244 with a 4, 4, Four, roughly the same EV spread we used on that Urshifu a little bit while back, and it just works for this sort of set. For a giraffe, uh, for a giraffe, again, if you make for a giraffe full speed with modest, it'll go to 112, which is outspeeding base 100. So you're outspeeding other Volks, other uh, Urshifus, other things like that. So I like this set a lot. Um, and then from there, we can do the exact same cut up, but this time we're prioritizing special attack. Very, very simple, easy, effective EV spreads, but there's deliberate reasons behind why we're using them. So just really, really nice. Blood Moon. Blood Moon can also kind of do the same thing, right? You can get to one... Hold on. If you make yourself timid, you can get to that one right there. You can do the same one, and you might as well just go a couple more uh, to speed creep those speed tiers, so that way you're faster than your Far Giraffe and faster than other people's Far Giraffes, and other just mons that are base 112s for base 100s and stuff like that. So I like this a lot. Uh, and then from there, same sort of thing. Very, very simple, effective EV spreads. Like it doesn't, EV spreads don't have to be complicated. If people are telling you you have to have the most complex, crazy, diverse EVs, no, you need to have the right mons, the right moves, the right items, the right base stats, right? It's those things that win the game. It's the thought process that wins the game. EV spreads are important, but they're not the whole game, right? You have the best EV spreads in the world, and if you get mixed up by a Steel Terra Urshi, it, EV spreads don't have anything to do with it, you know? Amongst already talked about EV spreads, same as one before. Uh, Volcarona, because we're sashed, uh, we can click the button. And you just want to be full timid in that situation, so you're outspeeding other things that you can. Uh, Urshifu. Urshifu is a little bit different. Um, I'm probably just going to click the button, though, and go Jolly Band. It's a set that I'm still very comfortable with, and this deals a ton of damage. I will want to run this through the damage calculator, though, and see. Uh, so I want to make sure that we can Oko Wellspring with Close Combat uh, from Jolly. Because I don't actually know. You know, I know a lot of things, and I think that it KOs, but, uh, I'm going to find out. Because I'll go, I'll go uh, Adamant if I have to. Nothing wrong with that. Sorry, uh, Jolly if I have to. So, uh, that's not 252. So, 252 there, and then we'll give it plus one, which would be a band. So, that's against a regular water pond, like a sweeper water pond. It does 114. It still KOs. Uh, nice. Um, uh, Water ponds aren't built that bulky. I'll take that. It's a 68% chance to Oko off uh, off Jolly. Like, I'll take it. Yeah, it's easy peasy. Right, so now that we got all of our EVs done, very, very, very simple EVs because I've been doing this for over an hour now. Um, yeah, I'm going to start doing my Terras. Uh, this guy is definitely going to need something a little bit more defensive. Um, I think that Fire Terra is probably the right one so we can Fire Terra in front of Gouging Fire so we don't have to get burned. I like this a lot. Um, Frigiraf. Frigiraf can be built a couple different ways. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Grass for this one, um, just in case we have to fight against Amoonguses. Uh, it's probably just fine. We're going to double dip our normal here, because that's kind of just how you play this Mon. 
Uh, we're going to go water there, like we talked about. We're going to go ghost here, so we can can avoid those fake outs if we have to. And then we already talked about steel here. So this is the easiest team of all of them. Very, very one-dimensional, but it features some tech that you don't really see all that often. So let's go into a game with it and see if we can get the third win. Okay, I vibe with this. This is a little bit of Terracot Blood Moon for a giraffe with like some terrain control. I like what they're doing over here. I think Scrafty is still a good lead. It threatens fake outs, so they might protect. I think I'm gonna go actually Scrafty Urshi because this says if you want to fake out to stop the protect, you lose. But you have to bring Frigiraf, and Frigiraf's not good into these. So I like this. I'm gonna bring my Volk maybe in case I need Trick Room. No, I'm gonna bring the Frigiraf, and I'm gonna bring Blood Moon still. Oh, Blood Moon is such a hard sell for me here though. I think that Volk might actually be better. And like enabling like Far Giraffe to do stuff instead of bringing Blood Moon. I think Blood Moon mirrors are weird. Blood Moon into like Terrakion and like Rillaboom is really, really scary. So uh, yeah, let's just start this one up and see what they're bringing to the table here. I'm not afraid of Whimsicott Terrakion, but I do think that we're going to force a Territor one by leading with an aggressive like lead that threatens Fake Out and threatens to go through Protect at the same time. So let's wait for them. I'll take another sip of my coffee, and I just want to say thank you guys for watching this video. If you got this far, um, you guys are amazing. So there's the Terracot lead. So you shouldn't want to rock slide this. That's the cool. That, that's the thing about this lead. You should be threatened. You should be threatened by my choice scarf, right? Um, potential on my Urshi. Uh, so I have fake out there. I have choice scarf damage. Like I have a lot going for me. Um, that being said, you could just no. I outspeed your. I outspeed. I don't outspeed the whims. Maybe I should have tried. No, I don't think I could have. I'm just going to kill this. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's just the play. What are you... Oh, grass? Oh, upper hand. No, no fake out, bro. No fake out, bro. Where are you looking? One, two, three eyes on me. Oof. 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 All right, so they're going to this turn go here and here. And I think I'm going to... Uh, I have Aqua Jet as an option. I'm going to pivot in here and pivot in here. I think a double pivot is the right way to play this. Because I don't want to just lose my Scrafty. Um, I'll lose the Valk slot there. And then I'll bring this Urshu back out. And then maybe Aqua Jet gets that. Because Aqua Jet's actually a lot stronger. Oh, Entei. Cool. Yeah, we're just not we're not taking any damage on these. The two Mons get big threatened by Whims. Yeah, I'm, nope. Mm -mm, nope. And so now we can just safely Tailwind, maybe. They have to respect the Trick Room as an option. So yeah, all Tailwind. If you do it, if you take a draft, go nuts. Like, I'm going to stagger these Tailwinds. Helping hand, big damage into the Valk, huh? Dang, they woke up and chose it. What if I use Trick Room, bro? What if I click Trick Room? You don't care about Trick Room? This guy does not even care about Trick Room. What a gamer. Um, it's Steel Terra Urshifu time, though. I definitely think it could be. It could also be Scrafty time. Both of these are going to take our Terra. I'm going to go uh, this one. Yeah, so I'm going to go Steel Terra. This is going to block the Moonblast. He's going to go here. Scrafty could eat that. Char Giraffe can eat it though too. I'm okay with this. Damn, I could have just trick room that guy in the face, bro. Where are you going? Wisp? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now you're still probably gonna die, but like, dang, dude. What a gamer. Wisp Entei, bro. First time. They have a whole fresh tail when they're gonna be able to apply. But I feel like I'm going to be able to really mess them up with Far Giraffe here. Like, ugh. Yeah, they already used their Terra, so it's like the Blood Moon's still dead. I wonder if they're going to, like, side pivot in Trakion or something. I mean, it doesn't matter. We still get the win. We have Scrafty in the back, too. Um, actually, if we take out this Whims, we win the game. So, I think the single target, uh, yeah, the single target Far Giraffe should just be able to take it out. This guy's not expecting the banded damage from the uh, Urshifu. And you can come with the Trakion, but like, more like Trakion, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and then we just pop. Doesn't really matter. Sacred Sword's fine. Oh, you was a crit too. Don't even care. Easy peasy. That guy set up two Tailwinds. Um, I'm gonna go to another one though. That game was pretty sloppy. That game was pretty sloppy. We're gonna go to one more. All right, more more stuff like this. But this guy's like a little bit of, more of a Trick Room vibe. So like, I think this is good. I think we can go Far Giraffe. I think Scrafty can definitely come here. But like, do you think I just Oko okay, and Day with Head Smash, guys? I'm gonna try it. I I ain't doing anything else today, bro. That's the thing. Like, this is the day. We're just using Scrafty. Oh my gosh, there it is. 
my gosh, dude. This is actually going to happen. Oh, yeah, dude. Let's go. I'm a gamer today. Oh, yes, dude. Show me that Entei. I have faith in you, Scrafty. I have faith. I know that this head smash is going to rain. Hsui and Ark and I never even heard of it, bro. It's Scrafty time. It's Scrafty time. Oh, oh it's Scarf Entei. Dude, that sucks. Oh, we didn't even get the KO, dude. <laughs> All right. Dazzling him. Dude, they didn't even use Trick Room. All right, that's fine. Um, scarf there. Ain't no thing. He's way too low, though, so we can actually just ignore it. Um, they won't even get the KO here, so I think I'm just going to go... I think I'm just going to Surging Strikes and Hyper Voice. Because I'll probably get to pick up the KO there. They, they, they won't KO with Eruption, and they're Scarfed. Yep. Boom. Oof. Boom. Oof. Boom. And we get a double KO with this. And now we're weak, but it's 3-2, and we still have Imprison up. And so, like, I wonder if they know that. Like, this Blood Moon has to go either Earth Power or Hyper Voice. Sorry, Earth Power or um, Blood Moon. And so, like, oh, we're not in, like, the worst spot. I think they're going to have to tear this into something stupid. Um, so we can go here or here. I actually want to get this thing off the board. I'm going to Hyper Voice. And then I think, yeah, oh my gosh, we're fine. One, two, three. This is going to do a lot with our Fire Giraffe, I think. And then our, we should be able to clean them up. With our, oh yeah, we should be able to clean them up here as long as we're not speed tying the Ursa Lunas. Remember, our Ursa Luna is full speed timid. So, and we still have Terra, like, go away. <laughs> Dude, this is so funny. That's funny. We got the, we got Scarf Eruption Entei and we're like, no, stop it. Get some help. Get Scraftied. So we take these wins all the way to the bank. We played two games with this one because this one was a little bit more fun. But yeah, we showed three completely different ways to play Scrafty. And if you guys like this series, if you feel like you'll learn something, think about letting me know. Um, if you guys want to try out these teams for yourself, I'll leave PokePace links of these teams in the description of this video. And yeah, I'm going to work on making a couple of these a week if this is something you guys want to see. Uh, I'm always open to requests. I would say, where's my phone? I have ideas. You know, I built all these three from scratch, but I have ideas for Pokemon I'd like to feature. Uh, Hydrapple could be used in a pretty, a few, a few cool ways. Uh, Haxorus could be used in a few cool ways. Bastidon could be used in a few cool ways. Uh, things like, things like those. So if any of those interest you, leave a comment, let me know which one you want to see or any Pokemon of your choice. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this team building guide and learned something. And uh, other than that, peace out. I'll see you guys next time.